Hey friends, and welcome to a new episode of What's New in Laravel. Today I'm going to bring you the latest things the Laravel team and community have been working on lately. Laravel 8.64.0 was just released and it has a lot of nice additions. We'll also look into two major updates to Laravel Vapor. So let's get to it. We'll start with a new where it belongs to eloquent method that allows you to filter models by a parent model. For example, you can filter posts that belong to a specific category by using where it belongs to and provide an instance of a category model. It comes in handy when you don't want to explicitly define the foreign key name and the parent primary key value in your query. Take a look. In this query, you have to explicitly define the foreign key name that refers to the category in the posts table and the name of the primary key of that table. This works fine, but here is an alternative. We can use the new where belongs to method, which will make the code easier to read and you don't have to explicitly check the names of the columns. What if it's category UUID and UUID instead of ID? What if it was category instead of category ID? I have seen people name their keys using different conventions. So this method can come in handy in these situations. You can also use this method multiple times in the same query. Like here, we are filtering posts that belong to a specific category and a specific author. Methods like where belongs to and where relation makes writing eloquent queries much more eloquent. Don't you think? Now let's move to another update on the testing component. New Laravel applications will start having the lazily refresh database trait on the base test case class by default. This trait configures the framework test runner to refresh the database between tests when a test requires interacting with the database. Before including the trait, developers had to explicitly include the refresh database or lazily refresh database traits in their test classes. But with this trait being included by default, just write tests, run them, and Laravel will take care of refreshing the database when needed. If you want to have the same behavior in your existing projects, first remove the refresh database and, ref and lazily refresh database traits from your individual classes, and then include the lazily refresh database trait in the base test case that ships with the framework. Now you don't have to worry about refreshing the database between tests anymore. Laravel will take care of it. Have you ever used the reduce collection method? It's a method that reduces the collection to a single value, passing the result of each iteration into the subsequent iteration. For example, this piece of code will return the sum of all items in the collection. On each iteration, the carry variable will hold the total from the previous iteration or null if it was the very first iteration. This method has been in the collection component for years. However, recently a community member has contributed a new reduce many method. This method reduces the collection to an array of values, passing the results of each iteration into the subsequent iteration. This method is similar to the reduce method. However, it can accept multiple initial variables. In this example, you see here the total will only include the sum of items that are greater than or equal to the previous item. You can pause this video and inspect the code a little longer to know what I mean. Also make sure to check the documentation for more examples and use cases. Now let's move to Laravel Vapor. In the past couple of weeks, there has been several performance improvements that allows your applications to run faster on AWS Lambda. First, we introduced a new option that allows developers to persist database connections while handling queue drops. If you set queue database session persist to true inside your vapor.yaml file under a specific environment, Vapor will keep the database connection alive on the Lambda container so it can be used by multiple drops. Without this option, Vapor closes all database connections between queue drops, so each job that interacts with the database would have to start a new database connection. The new option speeds up job processing of your projects and increases the throughput. Another important addition to Laravel Vapor is the ability to use Laravel Octane. 
By using Octane, Vable will interact with a single instance of your application and won't have to bootstrap a fresh instance when handling each and every request. This is a huge performance boost. Running your application in a stateful mode will cut the time it needs to hand requests, which saves you money. To get started, install Laravel Octane via Composer before you deploy to Vaber, and then set Octane option to true inside your Vaber.yaml file under a specific environment. In addition to this, you can also instruct Vaber to keep the database connections alive between requests, which will speed things up even more. And to do that, you may set the Octane database session persist option to true inside your Vaber.yaml file. Also, make sure to set a reasonable value for the Octane database session TTL option. It allows a specific or it allows specifying the time in seconds. The Lambda container should stay connected to the database when the container is not being used. That way, you can let the database server automatically close connections that were opened by Lambda containers that are no longer in use. Not having this option may result in your database becoming overwhelmed with active connections. Weber helps you run your application on AWS Lambda, which gives you on-demand auto-scaling. We are constantly working on enhancing the performance of your Weber projects and reducing costs of your cloud infrastructure. For more information, check weber.laravel.com. Finally, I have an update on a new plate directive that allows you to access data from a parent component inside a child component. For example, imagine we are building a complex menu component consisting of a parent X menu and a child X menu item. The X menu component may have an implementation like this. And because the color prop was only passed into the parent X menu, it won't be available inside the X menu item component. However, if we use the aware directive, the new directive, instead of the props directive, we can make it available inside X menu item as well. This new directive is very handy in complex components where the children rely on data passed to the parent component. And that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something. If so, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you know whenever we post new content. Have a great day, happy coding and see you later.